Okay, so what I'm going to do now is, because I know some of you are using Noteflight instead of Sibelius um, to try and write your compositions, I'm just going to show you very quickly how to um, use it um, to create the Year 8 Minimalist task. So um, I've logged in, I've created my free account, which allows me to make 10 compositions um, in the free account. And I've also got open in front of me the fourth page of the Year 8 Minimalist Workbook, which talks through the little task and how to create a successful minimalist um, piece. So, um, create. Here we go. I should just point out at, uh, at this stage, I am a complete novice with this as well. I've not used it before either, so um, I'm learning as I'm showing you. So click and start a blank score. The first thing is that this is a piano, and we don't want a piano. Um, I suggested in the video uh, that you might use um, tuned and untuned percussion instruments in the Sibelius video. Now, um, the NoteFlight uh, account, when it's a free one, won't allow you to do that. So I'm going with guitar and another guitar and another guitar if you're thinking why guitar that's because um, there's a really famous piece of music by Steve Reich which is featured in the third minimalist video called um, Electric Counterpoint that's written for guitars and also it's written for bass guitar so I found those under the pluck string menu I clicked on them and I pressed OK and it's put them in over here in the parts menu we're going to get rid of the piano and it's gone so now I've got um, three guitars and the electric bass. I am also going to add in, because the instructions suggest that you start by making up a rhythm, I'm going to add in just a simple rhythm part, which looks a bit weird because it's got no stave line. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by creating a really simple um, rhythm. I'm going to stick with 4-4. Four, four. You could change that here. Um, but I'm going to stick with that. Actually, what I am going to do is I'm going to increase my metronome. I think I can do that by... No, you can't. Increasing your metronome, you come over to here. There we go. And I'm going to go 140. Um, these minimalist pieces are quite quick. Get rid of that one. There we go. So um, I'm going to start by using quaver rhythms. Quavers, not crotchets. Click in the bar. <coughs> goes into the crotchet, but if you click in it, you edit it like that. And I'm just going to repeat, press an R for repeat, a whole bar. So I've got a continuous bar of quavers. We don't really want continuous quavers. We want to break it up to make the rhythm more interesting. So if you click on a note and press the delete button or backspace button on your um, on your uh, computer, it'll remove the note. So hopefully now if I press play, there you go. I'm going to click in the bar to highlight it. Like that, I'm going to press R for repeat, and it's going to repeat it. And it's repeating it and resizing my score. So we've just got that really simple little rhythm part in. So what I've done there is I've um, done number one instruction on the Minimalist Workbook um, composition task. I made up a rhythm, made up a simple rhythm. Um, it says here's an example of a pattern. Um, well, the example's here on the screen. I have used just quavers and quaver rests. Notice all the rhythms are up here. Now, what you could then do is add another rhythm. So, add part. Why don't we see if it'll let us? Uh, I can't remember what the limit on the number of parts in a score is. There probably is one somewhere. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, same again, I'm going to create um, <coughs> continuous quaver rhythm, just like I did before. And then I'm going to um, remove... the rhythm so I've got a new one here so let's have a listen to actually let's just click in the bar to repeat it repeat that through a few times so we've got let's have eight bars of that so far a nice eight bar block I'll repeat that one for an eighth bar let's press play it played it from bar eight because I had something bar eight highlighted so press play now There you go. So there's my nice simple, um, my nice simple rhythmic pattern, just using quaver rhythms. And quaver rhythms uh, going at 140 beats a minute gives a piece like a sort of sense of energy. Um, so this is instruction number two. Um, 
cyclic repetition and loop the original rhythm. That's what I've done there by making the rhythm one bar long and then I've looped it or cyclically repeated it um, over the, 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 the remaining bars. It wants to be very repetitive, this style of music. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some notes. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm looking at the rhythm I've got here. I wonder if this will work. So I'm going to I'm going to try and copy that. So I'm going to click on it, Control C, and then I'm going to Control V. I'm going to paste it in my top guitar part. Now what it's done is it's stuck it in there as a very high B. I don't want a B. I want a D. I want the tonic of this note to be based around D. So the piece is based around a key note or a tonic of D. Now what do we do from here? I'm going to now move the notes around. Um, it says number three instruction, add some notes. It says Reich uses four note patterns. So I've got a D for my first note, an F for my second pitch, an A for my third pitch, and then I've got an E for my fourth pitch. And I've now written... Um, a four note pattern and I've copied it from this rhythm down here so the rhythm I've written down there is the same as the rhythm in the guitar part and now I'm going to press play on it let's click in the bar to highlight it somewhere will it let me I need to press stop I think it's to my computers I'm leaving a moment click in the bar to highlight it press R for repeat I'll just do that through four times so what I'm going to do is same again. I'm going to click in my second rhythm part. I'm going to control C to copy. I'm going to click in guitar two. I'm going to control V to paste. Um, again, I'm going to move it down so it's based on the note D. And I'm going to write a slightly different four note pattern this time. So I'm going to stick with the D there. Actually, I might not even use four notes. Oh, So I've gone D, D is at my first pitch, then F, G, A. Click in the bar to highlight it, press R for repeat. And then let's click in the first note and press play. What we're looking for is that sound, that repetitive sound. Okay, so um, I've started uh, with the two parts here what I might do now is I might come down here and I might repeat these two parts again for another four bars so I've just clicked in the bar and I'm pressing the letter R for repeat not shift R control R just the letter R that's the same shortcut as in Sibelius actually in it goes um, there we go bar five I'm going to introduce a third guitar part. Now at this point you could add another rhythm part in, build the rhythm like we did before and then copy and paste it in, but I reckon by now that we probably know what we're doing. So we're going to um, come to guitar, um, the third guitar part, we're going to start the D again. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a high D. to a minimum, don't know why I did that. I'm gonna I'm gonna slightly change that. Move this note down. I don't like let's try that. So this has actually got five notes in not four. I've slightly cheated. Um press R for repeat in it goes. So let's Click on this note here. If you highlight a note, I reckon that it, when you press play, it probably play from this bar. So we don't have to listen to all of it. Here it goes. Yeah, I reckon that doesn't sound too bad. There we go. So uh, what do we need to do now? We need to we need some more bars now because um, this is a, a American um, based website. They don't call bars bars in America they call them measures so you can see here it says measure I'm gonna click plus and ah small snag it's put the bar in after the bar we we're just clicking on there which is not what we want so I'm gonna press control Z 
and I'm hoping that's going to undo it. Control Z, hold the control button down, press Z, and yay, oh, it's got rid of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the last note here, and I'm going to click now measure. Yay, it's added it in at the end. There you are. You see, you can always work your way through these things. I'm going to stick a few more in. Let's have, I don't know how many we've got there. Not sure. Um, quite a few. There we go. Onto a, it's building page three. There we are. It's, it's, it's a new page. So now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click. I'm going to hold shift down and I'm going to click and I'm going to hold shift down. I'm going to click and look, it highlights all three. And I'm going to press R for repeat and it'll repeat all three. Oh, that's great. That saves a bit of time. So we don't have to um, keep doing that. So just to show you what I did there, I clicked in the first bar, held the shift key down, clicked in the second bar, held the shift key down again, clicked in the third bar, you press R for repeat and repeat the lot. Now, bar nine, I'm going to add in the bass. Now the bass is in the bass clef, so you've got to be careful with your bass clef notes here. Middle line is a D. Now what I'm going to do with the bass clef is I'm going to give it a very different feel. I am going to use longer notes on the bass clef. So in it goes, and I'm going to make that a semi-brief. And I'm going to make the bass very simple. I've just gone two Ds followed by two Cs. Again, I'm pressing R for repeat. I'm using up and down arrows. So I think it's time to listen from the start. Well, here we go. much instruction number four done there um, instruction number four use D as your tonic choose other notes make a little riff repeat that riff round um, we've obviously put the patterns together as well so that's instructions three and four now what about instruction number five change the length of the notes so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do two sneaky things I'm going to take this first pattern of, of notes and rest here we've got quaver 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 rest Quaver, 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 rest, quaver, quaver. And I'm going to take that pattern. I'm going to use the same shape of melody, but I'm going to increase the note length. And I'm going to make them crotches. So instead of starting with a D quaver, I'm going to start with a D crotchet. Then I'm going to have an F crotchet. Then I'm going to have a crotchet rest. I'll come back and sort that out in a minute. And then the next note's an A. Go back onto the D, press delete. So what you can see here is instead of it going quaver D, quaver F, quaver S, quaver A, I've gone crotchet D, crotchet F, crotchet rest, crotchet A. And I'm going to do the same with the second half of the bar. I'm going to use that over here. So let's click in this bar here, click the note. I'm just going to press delete. So look, what I've done is I've made that bar there last for two bars by doubling the length of every note and rest. So that is called augmentation. And that's the instruction that it suggests you could try and use to change the length of the notes. You can also do the opposite. I'm going to do that with this little pattern here. I'm going to halve the note values here. So start with two Ds, but these are going to be semi-quavers and semi-quavers. Then we've got a quaver rest instead of a crotchet rest. Oh, we want a, we want a semi quaver. And then we want a, a semi quaver rest here. There you go. So again, what I've done here is I've taken the whole bar, and instead of this bar lasting for double the length, like the, the idea up here in guitar wanted, this is a half the length. So what I want to do now is repeat that. Click, hold shift down, click. And it highlights half the bar. Press R for repeat. Whoa, whole bar done. So now I'm going to highlight the whole bar. Click. Press R for repeat. And let's carry that on a couple more bars. So, okay. I'm also going to carry on that pattern there. Click, shift, click. Highlights both. 
and let's repeat that a couple of times and then what I'm going to do is this third pattern here so I'm not overcomplicating it I'm going to keep that one as it is keep that one going I just click press R for repeat and then the bass again I'll keep it really simple I'm just moving between the note D and the note C really simple I wonder what this sounds like what you notice also now is that I've slightly abandoned using these rhythm parts. Now I've got, I've got the whole thing going with them. I probably don't need them anymore to the extent that actually now, let's get rid. We don't need them anymore. They've served their purpose. They allowed us to generate a rhythm. So here we go. From the top, let's have a listen. Now, you can obviously continue to repeat the patterns, gradually alter them, manipulate them. Don't do anything too radical. Um, keep the patterns very similar to each other. So let's say, for instance, let me show you what I mean by that. So if you want to gradually develop your pattern, let's press stop. My computer's just having a moment. Press R for repeat to highlight the pattern again. And then, by I mean, simple, simple, simple. <laughs> All I've done there is swapped the first two notes over. And I swapped the second two notes over. That, that's my alteration. Half a repeat. Let's just have a listen, listen to this pattern. I suspect if you click on the part to highlight it, and if I press play now, I reckon it's only going to play that part, not all of them. Right, no, it didn't. Okay. Uh, click on the note we want it to start on. Oh, my computer's just having a little moment, sorry. It's just frozen. It's really gripping watching your teacher's computer not work. Oh, let's press stop. I think that might be it. And hopefully, if I press play now, it's gonna play from here. <laughs> Just a catchy little riff, okay? And all I did was swap round the, the pitch of the first two notes. Now, if you want to really make your piece um, have like a contrasting section in the middle, what you could do is try and change key. Now, by changing key, what that does is that alters your tonic note. Up here, look, click in the next bar. I'm going to change the key here, change key signature. Top tip here. Go minor and go B minor. Press OK. Now, oh, what that also means is we need to get rid of that one. How do we do that? I don't know. Oh, it's done it. It's done it. And what we need to do then, click in that bar line. I don't know why it's doing a double bar line there, but let's click in the bar line here. There we go. We really, we want to get rid of that key signature we want it to say b minor still why is it i don't know why it's doing that this is me using this for the first time oh there we go there we go clicked it again so how do you make this contrasting section similar sort of pattern again my quaver pattern but it's so important that once you change key you have to have to have to have to change tonic there's a b Again, I'm just using quavers. I might come back to my next part up here. Quavers, not crotchets. Quavers, not minims. And up here, I'm going to start with the first quaver, not crotchet. not minim it's 
So this is my new little pattern. Have a little look. <laughs> click, press play. There we go, quite like that one as well. Click in the bar, hold shift, click, hold shift, click. Press R for repeat, R for repeat. I know I've run out of bars, but because I keep pressing R, it keeps creating a new bar for me. Then in the bass, if you want to add the bass in again, again, let's go long note, simple. I'm just, that's a low B in the bass. There's a B. And I'm just going B and A. Press play. It's gone from the start. Why has it done that? We don't do that. We want to go from just this, this end bit. Let's see if it'll do it now. And so on, so on, so on. And gradually develop it like you did before. If you want to get really clever, what you then do is you go back to the opening key of, of, of um, well, it had no key signature, but it's based around the note D. And you could finish your piece by doing that. Shall we just have a quick listen all the way through? I know that this isn't finished. I know I've gone through quite a lot here quite quickly. But hopefully this will give you a bit of an idea of how to use note flight to create this minimalist piece. Um, and, and for those of you that are trying it, um, you can have a little go and see how you get on with it. Um, here we go. Let's have a little listen from the start. Um, scroll back up to the top. Click on the first. Fingers crossed it's going to play from here. Here we go. when you go back into your um, sort of like account overview page it'll show this as the uh, the file name one final thing eventually it would be great to think that these pieces could be um, developed on Sibelius in school maybe down the line and there is a way of doing that um, you can get Noteflight and Sibelius to talk to each other so what you do is you click on the little cloud here that saves it but it should save it as it's going along then what you do is you click on this cloud here that exports it and if you save as a MIDI file and click for import into another notation editor click continue and close what it's done is it's popped that into the downloads folder of my um, uh, of, of my computer MIDI files like it's a sort of universal um, notation package which will talk to any other piece of um, software. So you can save Sibelius as a MIDI file and open in Noteflight. You can save Noteflight and open in Sibelius. Um, it'll also talk to other things like GarageBand, um, I think, uh, Logic, uh, Finale. There are loads of these different packages out there. And if you save something as a MIDI file, it'll, it'll talk to anything. So let's now click Close. Fingers crossed, if I now click here and I go back to my scores, it'll show us my composition. Yep, with my name. There it is. Great. So there we go. You are allowed to make 10 compositions in um, note flight but of course if you export it as a midi file to save it that way you've got a copy of it you could then delete it out of note flight because you've made a copy of it and then create an 11th and so on and so forth so although it says you can only have 10 of these uh, you can obviously make more um, I'm really pleased that people are desperately trying to get some composing done in, in year 8 I think it's fantastic I'm, I'm, I'm so delighted that, that people are having a go at it 
and any problems with it i'll do my very best to help you all um and and let's see how we get on so hopefully watching this through will give you a bit of a hand um and it's not too long-winded i hope and it should help you out um anyway keep going folks good luck with it all thanks bye